assume that we we talked to people across the galaxy and they said, okay, we've seen all you what you got on planet Earth, but what do you make? Yes. What do the people make? Yes. What is the value yes. of what people are using yes. on that planet? Creation. What are people creating? Yeah. Yeah, and this is what it is. Well, you know the uh, the whole concept of art is is the is the building block right. of everything that we know. The masonry that. The real masonry, not nonsense, right. that put those uh, pyramids together. There's no girders, there's no mortar, right. there's no metal, right. there's none of that in those. Okay, that's mason. That's putting them bricks down that's right. the way they're supposed to be at a 45 degree angle from four sides. And when they try to do that today without mortar or girder, okay, and that's metal or cement, mm -hmm. collapse after right. three stories. See, this is. Um, this is a little less than a story. Maybe three more feet. Ten feet is a story. Right. The Great Pyramid of uh, Khufu is 46 stories high, brother. Yes, indeed. So that's who we were? So all of what we're doing now, this little money that we're making, you know, off of this art that we're creating, this little money that we're making yes, sir. off this art that we're creating, uh -huh. is leading us back <clears throat> into spirituality. Now, before we get finished, and whatever you, questions you got for me, sure. I'll answer. We want to define spirituality, because that's really what we're here for. Right. To get to the spiritual end of it. If you watch Michael Jordan play basketball, he says he's trying to get to the zone. Every time he gets on the court, he's trying to get to the zone. Whereas they call it unconscious, I'm calling it great conscious. Yes, sir. Okay? So when you take mind, your mind, not your brain, your mind, mm -hmm. and you put it over matter, mind over matter, that's your physicality. Right. You summon the spirit. You cannot separate the three as we've been taught right. here in this society. You are one with the creator, both physical, mental, and then that which is summoned through that reality, spiritual, or the spirituality of who we are. Right. That's why when you listen to music, you're not listening to... Uh, Chinese music. I mean, I'm not knocking that, but that ain't what nobody wants to hear. Okay? When you look at uh, dreads, you know, ain't nobody, that's us. Right. When you look at fashion, that's us. Right. When you look at anything that we do, the world wants a piece of that. That's correct. Now, what do we call that? We call that rhythm. Now, we've summoned the spirit mm -hmm. to create rhythm. Right. Now, listen carefully. Come on. And rhythm is the reason for being. Let me say it again. We summon the spirit yes. to create rhythm. Uh -huh. And rhythm is the reason for being. Who dances like us? Look, man, I go back to when there was no television. <laughs> yeah, no television. We listen to the radio. Okay? Now, all of a sudden, TV's on. Wow! So now, I'm a teenager. You know, 12, 13. And... The dances that they were doing in New York and Philadelphia, they was doing them same dances in L.A., in Detroit, in Miami. How did they know to do the same dances at the same time, Tree? Yes, indeed. Whoa, now we give it a step off into something right. that's way beyond what we've been taught. Right. Because the physical world, that's the first level. You're born into that. Right. But you're coming from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. See, so on one side, you've got love and emotion. It's necessary. Right. You have to have that. Right. But on the other side, you have logic and reasoning. Okay, now, in the world that we live in, making money, building something, right. eh, not a lot of love and emotion in that. A lot right. of logic and reasoning right. about how to get the job done. That's right. Kasi. Yes. Yeah, hard work, right? Mm-hmm. But show me any baby that was born based on logic and reason. Oh, no, that's love and emotion. That's right. So when you put love and emotion and logic and reasoning together, you have magic. Come on. The magic of birth. That is the greatest experience that you will ever conceive, perceive, or receive on this planet. Come on. Life. Come on. Okay? So logic and reasoning. That means when you're out here doing, see, law is not... 65 miles an hour. That's not a law. Right. That's a rule. That's a regulation. Right. Because they think you can't do better than that. Right. But if you go back 150 years ago, no one thought that a car or anything would move 
75 miles an hour. Right. They thought you couldn't even, you couldn't deal with it, right? right. Well, we're going to end on this and I'll receive any questions. If you look at the space shuttle, it moves at a rate of speed of 18,450 miles an hour once it gets out of the Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I telling you that? Because if you study Ivan Van Sertema, great, great, great historian, custodian, you'll find that everything on that space shuttle that moves that fast, mm -hmm. you know, horses and things, you know, maybe 20, 30 miles an hour. Right. 18,000? Everything on there from the booster rockets to the pilot system to the toilet. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Was created by black military men, so they couldn't get a patent. The patent then goes to the United States government, and it's military. But those were black people, according to Dr. Van Sertema. Now, he didn't sneak and do that. NASA invited him to come down and record. They didn't know he was that bad. All right. He went and pulled everything out and dropped the bomb on everybody. All right. I said from the, from the booster rockets to the guidance system to the cockpit to the toilet, because you can't go around polluting space. Now, they didn't give a damn, but right. these brothers did. Right. You think about that. Yeah. Hydroponics. They were like growing food and water on those things, man. Great God in heaven. Who are we? When we speak in terms of God, I'm looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say God Almighty. I said God. That's right. When they first saw you, they said, Guma, Az Duba. Now, you can't break that down in books or in YouTube or, or, or any of those things that, they, you, know, that you find. That doesn't work. Right. That's ancient Greek, okay, and it meant guma, strong, Oz, beautiful, duba, wise. That's when they first saw you, when we allowed them to come out of the Caucasus Mountains. Right. They saw you, they called you God. That's how they said it, so it's G, guma, O, Oz, and D, duba. Yeah. Ah. Guma, <laughs> ah, Guma. So today we're all looking for we're all looking for a greater understanding of what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Okay. And uh, let me say this to you. And I really will listen to you. Yeah. No matter how far your mind is off into the cosmos, don't forget that your behind is right here. That's right. I watched uh, uh, this morning a. Um, the Chronicle on uh, Attica and how they treated those brothers, man. What they did to them, mm -hmm. they slaughtered them. Mm -hmm. And then lied and said they killed the hostages when it was gunfire and they had no guns, they killed the hostages. And then later on they gave them $12 million of survivors. Well, see, if your daddy gone, your, da your daughter gone, your mama gone, what the hell is 12? How much money can I pay you for your children, man? Yeah, or for your parents? So there's no money. But that's position. their God. What is you? And I, I, my question is, and I'll, I'll be quiet. What is your God? Don't tell me. Show yeah. me. That's right. I'm from Missouri. Come on. <laughs> come on, come on, come on come Show on. me. I'm come second son down here. You know, I've been coming here for 40 years. Show me. Ain't this a show me state? This is a show well, me. Show state. me. Don't tell me about you. Whatever. Right. Show me. That's right. Show me some 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 understanding for the jailhouse crew. Show me some understanding for the child that has no parents. Show me some understanding for those that can't quite understand and you recognize that it ain't even understanding this overstanding. That's right. Okay, but go ahead. I'll, I'll listen to you now. Did so, I give you a little bit? Yes, you <laughs> I appreciate that. No, I appreciate you. So, well, I'm going to click it right there and we're going to start again. So, Baba, all right, when it comes to the new trending words now is sustainability and living. Now, you are the living, walking book of sustainability. You've already laid out how you started, what it, you know, the genesis of where you are now after 50, 50 plus years. A lot of people want to look at it as how they want to straight a craft and make a living. You do this full time. You've done this full time. Now, I myself, I, I do 30 plus shows a year on the road, 15, 20 times a year. Now, that is nothing compared to what you do. So to all the people coming behind us. You know, as I look and see people doing the type of copper works that I've started, younglings doing stuff, you've seen, now that's just in my influence, 
Now you see the greater across the United States and across everywhere. You see all this influence of this wire wrapping, this copper. So what are the tools that it takes to sustain full time and make a living of this? Well, first, let's say the proof is in the pudding. Come on. My students have students. That's right. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And in some cases, my students, students have students. Do you yes, understand? Sir. Yes, sir. I'll be 76 this year. So I taught the generation before me because they wanted to know. If you came to me properly, not bowing down to me, but because right. I'm going to respect those that are older than me. But if you came to me and asked, yeah, I'm teaching. And I've never, ever charged a black person one penny to learn how to do this. Right. You know, it was like, Mr. Miyagi, wax on, right. wax off. You remember, get over mm -hmm. there, tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fold yes, that up, indeed. son. Yes, Pick indeed. this up. Put that in the truck. That was the pay. That is very true. Is okay. That line about yeah, that. That, that, was, that was the pay. Okay. <laughs> that was the pay. And the, the 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 tools are tools that many times we create. Okay. Not just pliers and hammers and all that kind of stuff. Are the tools that we create is your hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you study, you'll find that a man. Is any being that has a hand. You're right. I said being. That's right. Being. Uh -huh. Let's just get real clear on uh -huh. that, right? Not reflection of a being. Right. But being. Right. Because there are reflections. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what do you mean a man is... Okay, well, first of all, the word man is not gender related. It's all of us. So, when we speak in terms of male and female, the word man encompasses all of that right okay and uh when we go to reference that concept of having a hand okay which allows you to make tools right. build tools right. create tools right if you go to your car son s-u-n s-o-n uh if you go to your car um you got a manual right. you got a car manual or, or a handbook or a handbook that's right. hand man that's right. okay so no we've difference. created all these, all these tools we've created, all right? Mm -hmm. And when you say, what tools do you need? The first tool is a mind that wants to fulfill its destiny. That's correct. This is not a place. This is a journey. Right. And the journey is that at this age, when I was young, I really, I really used to enjoy like wrestling and playing basketball and football and sports. Well, after a while, you can't do that anymore. I'm still in good shape to be an old man, but I'm not trying to play football. Right. I ain't trying to wrestle with nobody. Right. Okay. Uh, still a defend now, but I'm not trying to do any of that at right. this point. But with this, with this jewelry that we're doing, with this, with this, with this clothing and fashion, with this woodworking and leather and all the things that the art world perceives, you know, the painting, the acrylics, the pastels, all of that. You constantly get better, mm -hmm. even though your hands might be shaky. You can just you can catch in between the shakes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you just take your time, I'm uh, as a jeweler, a silversmith, okay, goldsmith, lapidaris. I cut stones. I work in all metals. I'm I'm doing better work now. It's, it's 75. I'll be 76 this year than I've ever done before. Yes, indeed. And and that was proven by coming to the show and then buying up all my stuff. Yes, indeed. <laughs> all the major pieces that I made. They were looking for me. So, segue now. Next week is Capital Jazz Fest, correct? That's in, that's in, that's in uh, D.C., uh, near D.C. Yes, Okay. Capital Jazz. Meriwether Post, Maryland. Right, so now you're going to get on the road and get to make and create. When I finish you, the truck is running. Yes, indeed. Hopefully the air conditioner is working. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay, Bob, one more final question. The other day we mentioned it, the other day I talked about what goes into a booth fee. And I brought to you what... I conceive as to be a, a, a benchmark for sustainability, and that's the 80-10 rule. The 80-10 rule is 80% of the vendors need to do 10 times the booth fee of what we were charged in the show. I'm going to take it further than that. Go ahead. I'm going to say 100%. Okay. If you wish to be successful, okay, and when what we create the volume of what we will consider success, right. okay, to what level, okay, there is no mediocrity in art. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're, you're not you're not sustaining what it is that you've been giving. Right. All right. So the rule of thumb is that your 
expenses should not exceed more than 10% of your gross or mm -hmm. your entry fee right. should not, I'm calling that, that's the major part of the expense, right. okay, should not exceed 10% of what you're, not net, but what your gross is. Yes, sir. And you got other things, you know, as time went on, I mean, we sleep in a truck all the time. Mm -hmm. Go to the truck stop. You know, we don't do that. You know, we, we hear, right. this is $300 a day. We got right. three rooms. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, I'm saying we don't do that all the time. Right. We, we came here as not so much vacation. I don't vacate. We came here to relax a little bit, have a good time, because we had worked really hard getting the art ready, mm -hmm. the inventory ready for this. So 10% of your gross is the rule of thumb. Your expense, your, your entry fee should never be more than 10% right. of what you gross. And when it is, then you have to go back and look at a few things and try to figure out, can I, can I, can I get it to that point? Because right. if you're not working on getting it to that point, then you're, you're in a quagmire. You're sinking. Right. You're sinking. Right. You know? Part of that, part of that, <clears throat> that, that benchmark's important because as an artist, you have to make sure that you can have the inventory to even it, to match that expectation or beyond. Yes, it's a learning process. That's right. So some people are not prepared to step out on certain shows. They may no. not have the that's, inventory. That's a very, very good point.